Bonjour Genie Engineers! In this video, I want to share with you guys only 5 tips that you will need so that you can pass your FE exam. Now, if you're here for the first time and you want to learn more about engineering or really just how to engineer your life better, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started! Now, before we start, if you guys have questions like why, when, and which FE you should take, I definitely recommend that you watch one of my other videos where I try to answer all those questions. And hopefully that can help you decide when and which FE you should take. Tip number one, look at the specifications on the NCS website. I'm going to show you how you can use that so that you can build a strategy to study smarter for this test. So the first thing we're going to do is visit the NCS website. Now, don't worry about the link, I will make sure to leave in the description below so you can check it out later. But the first thing you see here is they give you the time and how many questions you will have during the exam. Now, if you're interested and you want to learn more about this, I definitely recommend that you check out my other videos where I talk about all the things that you must know before you start studying for your test. And I really talk about how you're supposed to manage your time so that you can finish the test on time. Now let's look at the specifications, which is why we're here. As you can see here, these are all the FEs that are offered by the NCES. And so for each discipline, they give you a guideline, which I'm going to show you how you can use to study more efficient for your test. Okay, so don't worry about this highlighted parts right here. I will discuss them in a little bit, but first I want to cover the number of questions. So the number of questions is really important because it really just tells you how many questions you will be getting for this subject. So I, the way how I highlighted it is I did red being the highest number, then I have yellow, and then there's green, and then blue being the least number that will be uh, covered on the test. So I'm going to give you an example like with statistics. I didn't take that class in college and so when i looked at the specifications i was like okay i'm getting four to six questions during this test in a subject that i've never studied so should i waste my time on it no so i what i did i just um uh, i just covered the basics and i just knew the basics and the easy part of it and if i got stuck in a difficult question i wouldn't study for it because it is not worth my time so and also in my test, I actually got three questions, which were really easy and straightforward. It was like the question on the mean and the mode, question on standard deviation, and then the other one was on confidence intervals. So so this, this what I highlighted here, is the question that I got for my test, which I took about, I think, a year ago. And what I also did right after my test, I wrote down all the questions that I had, or at least the ones that I was able to remember, and I wrote them down, and I will be posting a video in the future where I will be covering all those exams all those questions and I will uh, hopefully you can use those questions as a practice exam to help you prepare for your test okay so the next thing we're going to look at is the uh, we're going to see the material that will be on the test and we're going to compare it to the number of questions that will be um, that will be covered so we have math you are the high number so we have from 7 to 11 statistics computational tools ethics uh, engineering econ are the low numbers so I remember computational tools I got a question on Excel I think and I got two on programming which were really simple uh, I will go over them in, in the future but it's very simple then after that we have statics uh, it's at the high number and I think this is true for a lot of other FE disciplines uh, they focus on statics dynamics and uh, uh, not so much dynamics but strengths of materials fluids I've seen that a lot like being getting uh, being repetitive but so statics you have 7 to 11 then we have mechanics of materials then we have um, materials low number then we have hydraulics and hydrology. This one is at the high number, which is eight to 12. So I actually got a lot of questions on this subject on fluids and hydraulics and hydrology. Uh, I will definitely cover this uh, in, in the future, but just keep that in mind. 
if right now you haven't taken hydrology and you will you will be taking it in like soon or in a year or two make sure to remember this and so that you can focus on the class so that you can hopefully get as much as you can so the test will be easier for you we have structural analysis structural design i did get a um, couple questions i think i got like a total of 10 questions on there Geotechnical engineering, I got a lot of questions on it. Transportation engineering as well. Environmental engineering, honestly, I didn't take that class um, in my school. They don't really offer it. And so it was a little bit difficult to learn it by myself. But um, in, in the test, I got a lot of conceptual questions and I got one uh, where it, it was actually solving, but it was really straightforward. It was just getting the equation from the handbook, which I will discuss in a little bit, and then just plug in and then just solve. It was very simple. So I will go over that question as well um, in future videos, but construction, I barely got any questions on there. And then surveying is also at the low level. In surveying, I got uh, one about the angles and then one for leveling. It was really simple uh, question. So yeah that's uh get yourself familiar with the specifications make sure you know your materials now you know what you need to focus on the, just go over um just focus on the number of questions like whatever the highest study that first and then as you go just and then you hit the lower numbers so don't start with the low numbers because you will be wasting your time i would recommend that you start you start with the one with the highest number. Like here we saw geoengineering, geotechnical engineering, and that one includes soils and foundation. So focus on that first. Then you have hydrology and hydraulics. That's what I would focus on next. And then after that, you have transportation engineering. That one was a lot of questions in there. And a lot of people actually get a lot of questions on transportation. It's really easy. It's not that hard, but just, just know it first and then as you go, then hit the green, and once you hit the green, then or hit the yellow, sorry, hit the yellow, like statics and the mechanics of materials and so on, and then hit the green, and then leave the blue ones last. And the blue ones, majority of them are like really easy to like fluids is really easy, materials and uh, dynamics. And I really want to say this, guys, like this test is really not that hard. It's very straightforward test. It's just it's designed to test your fundamentals of engineering. It's all the classes that you took in college and there's no tricks to it. It's very straightforward. And if you find yourself getting stuck in the exam for like a question, you're spending a lot of time, stop for a minute and tell yourself, maybe I'm overthinking it. You know, just try to keep it simple and just keep in mind that it's, it's, they're not trying to trick you. It's, there's no tricks in this test. Before we jump into tip number two, I want to talk about the time that you get during the test. I mentioned this before in my previous videos, but I think it's really important to talk about it here as well. See, you get about five hours and 20 minutes for 110 questions during the test. And what I recommend is that you spend about two hours to two hours and 15 minutes maximum on the first part and you leave about three hours for the second portion. Now, the first parts of the test, you get questions on math, statics, ethics, computational tools, statistics, strength of materials, uh, engineering, econ, uh, all the uh, first engineering classes that we took in our first and second year of college. Now, the second portion usually covers like geotechnical engineering, environmental, transportation, uh, hydrology, hydraulics, all the, uh, I wouldn't say harder, uh, harder uh, materials, but it just like, it would just require a lot more thinking and a lot more equations than the first part. So that's why I recommend that you leave at least three hours for the second portion of the test. Tip number two, get yourself familiar with the handbook. Let's go visit the NCS website again. So this is the same website that we visited earlier. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see here you have the reference uh, materials. And so you can click on here. If you haven't signed up, I'd recommend that you do and just create an account and you can just download it for free. Uh, you can also buy a copy if you want, but I don't recommend it because during the test, you will get the electronic version and I recommend you get yourself familiar with that one so you kind of get used to it. Once you download it, you get something like this. 
If you look at the bookmarks here, you have all these subjects that are on this manual that may or may not apply to you, depends on which FE you're planning on taking. Um, if under each of these subjects, there are equations that you may or may not need during the test, depends on the question. But my advice to you right now is download this PDF and have it on your computer and make sure you get yourself familiar with it because it's really important to just know where the equations are and just, you know, locate them just because during the test you don't have enough time to go and look for the equations. I actually had a friend who took the test and um, he didn't get himself familiar with this manual. He didn't use it when he was studying. And so when he took the test, he told me like he had such a hard time trying to find where the equations um, are and he didn't have enough time to finish his test. So I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to be able to finish your test. So get yourself familiar with this manual. Make sure you know where your equations are. And also like looking at the equations and stuff, you can get an idea what could be on the test, right? Go back and forth to the specifications. Like here, uh, I saw chemistry, like, you know, if you're taking FE civil, you know, this is not for you. So you can just skip it. Uh, if you go like, let's say dynamics, you know what type of equations or questions you may get. So this can give you also can be used as a guideline on what to study and what not. On the future, I would also be going over this manual and I would go over some materials or some equations and variables that are missing here. I found that mostly the case, especially in uh, transportation of engineering. And so I want to go over that with you and make sure that you're not missing anything before you take your test. Number three, get an FE manual. I actually ended up purchasing two FE manuals, FE Outdoor Discipline and then for the FE Civil because at the time I wasn't sure which FE I was going to take. And I got the manual by Michael Lindenberg and I found them very helpful. They were very relevant. They were very close to what was on the specifications. But again, if you're taking FE Civil, I would say be careful, especially when you get to environmental. I found that a lot of things on there wasn't necessarily relevant to uh, our test because I think the NCS changed some of the subjects uh, that are covered on the environmental engineering. But other than that, I found the book was very relevant and it really helped me uh, kind of know what I need to study for. When you first open the book, it's, it's very straightforward. He gives you a conceptual and then he goes over an example and he explains it, how to solve it. And then after that, at the end, you get like a kind of like 10 to 15 questions and then just to kind of test yourself. And then after that, there's like the solutions for those questions that you just solved. So it's really nice uh, book. It's, it's made my studying much easier and uh, I definitely recommend it. I also recommend that you get the calculator. I, I talked about this in my previous video. NCS does not allow you to have a graphic calculator. You only They only allow three types of calculators. You can check it out. But the calculator that I recommended was TI36X Pro. And the reason why is because it was very close to or similar to the calculator that I used in college. So I was used to it. It also has cool uh, functions like uh, how to do standard deviation or matrices. And it really saved me time. Like I mentioned earlier, I got that question on standard deviation. Well, this solved it for me for like 30 seconds and I was able to save time. So I definitely recommend it. I would leave the link below in case you want to check it out. Okay, so tip number four, do a lot of problems. Now, you know the material that you need to study. You have the equations. You know which equation will be provided to you. You have your calculator. You have your book. Now it's time to do a lot of practice problems. This is going to help you because during the test, you won't have time to think or trying to remember. The more problems you do, the faster you'll be, the more time you'll save during the test. Use the FE manual to practice more problems. You can also review your class notes or go over the books that you used in college. I will also be posting videos where I will be going over the FE problems and hopefully that can help you with your studying. 
now i know some of you are probably going to school right now or you're working what i would do is i would schedule at least an hour to two hours a day during the week where you would just go over the problems or just review your notes or conceptual whatever it is and then during the weekend try to set up four to eight hours minimum and do again more practice problems and i think by the end of the month you will be ready for your test Okay guys, so last tip, which is tip number five, do a practice exam at home. So before I took my test, I actually took two practice exams, one on the second week and the last one I took it on the fourth week. And it really helped me kind of see where I was and what I needed to work on and what I needed to focus on. But not only that, it's really um, the first te test that I took, I was actually freaking out the first five minutes of the test because it almost felt like I was taking the real test. And it was important because I was able to uh, kind of manage my stress and my, my anxiety. And so when I took, when I went to take my FE, I was uh, less stress and so this is why i really recommend that you take a practice exam at home also when i was actually taking the test at home i mimicked the same environment as if i was taking the real exam so i had no distractions i had no phone next to me i made sure that nobody would distract me I had no water, no snacks, because that's how it is actually during the test. You, you're not allowed to have snacks or water in the exam. So one of the practice exams that I took was the NCES. I will leave the link below in case you're interested, but I definitely recommend it. It was very relevant to the test. And one of the questions on the, uh, on the manual was actually on my test. I will also be posting a practice exam in the future so to help you have access to more practice problems and hopefully that can help you prepare for your test. Okay guys, so let's do a recap. So the first thing we talked about was specifications. It covers all the material that will be on your test. Then we have the handbook that has all the equations that will be provided to you. Then tip number three, we talked about the review manuals and the, the calculator that you should get that will help you with your studying and time management during the test. Then we have the practice problems. Make sure you do a lot of practice problems either by reviewing your notes or getting the FE review manual or uh, reviewing your books from college. And then lastly, we talked about the practice exam where you can do uh, get one from the NCES so that you can practice uh, before you actually take your test. If you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure to share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. A la prochaine.